Hey everybody, Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I got a, a video right now. It's just one news item that I wanted to do as its own news video outside of the vlog. And so what has happened recently is the FDA has officially opened up the comment period regarding flavors and vapor products. This is incredibly important. This is something that every vapor i don't care every single vapor in the united states should be doing this should be get, you know i'm not trying to be like the the dictator or the police of the vape industry i just can't stress enough how crucial this is because what the fda has done is they've opened up the comment period about flavors and vaping on the u.s food and drug administration website i'm going to link to it down in the description below there's a statement from the fda that says uh, statement from FDA Commissioner Scott Godlib, MD, on efforts to reduce tobacco use, use, especially among youth, by exploring options to address the role of flavors, including menthol in tobacco products. This is what a lot of people are calling, oh, the FDA flavor ban. And I don't think that this is set out by Scott Godlib or the FDA to be a full on flavor ban. I'm gonna read you one paragraph, maybe two paragraphs out of this, but the whole article, and it's 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 long. This this official statement is, is quite long. It covers, you know, uh, when kids start smoking and what, what those ages look like. And kids said that if there wasn't menthol then they might not have started smoking and more people smoke menthol cigarettes than smoke other other types of cigarettes and they're overall trying to make things like combustible tobacco uh, cigars cigarettes small little cigars those beaties I don't know if those beaties still exist anywhere but remember those beaties and they were flavored they are really very worried that flavors are what is going to entice someone who is underage to possibly pick up a really horribly deadly tobacco habit but but I wanted to read this part to you that says, but when it comes to flavors in non-combustible products like electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes, we recognize the issue involves additional considerations. Here, it's possible for flavors to do both harm and good. The troubling reality is that e-cigarettes are the most commonly used tobacco product among middle and high school students. I really wish that they wouldn't use the term tobacco product, still pushing for vaping to be its own thing, but the FDA still considers it a tobacco product, which is why they're talking about it now. The troubling reality is that e-cigarettes are the most commonly used tobacco product among middle and high school students and flavors are identified as one of the top three reasons for use. I would actually be really interested to see what the other two reasons given are. They don't, they don't mention it. Given these findings, we need to be wary of the role flavors play in attracting youth to initiate on any tobacco product that could lead to regular use, something we clearly want to avoid. No child should use any tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. At the same time, we're aware that certain flavors may help currently addicted adults adult smokers switch to potentially less harmful forms of nicotine containing tobacco products. And that's one of the things that we really need to communicate to the FDA that yes, adults like flavors and flavors in vapor products is one of the things that distances, mentally helps you distance yourself from cigarette smoking. It's one of the things that makes switching from smoking to vaping so much easier. There's also another paragraph in here where Scott Gottlieb says, I've talked to smokers who've told me they've quit cigarettes altogether and that they now vape. And they've also told me it was the flavors that helped them make that transition off of combustible cigarettes. Now I know anecdotes aren't the same as data and the A NPRM specifically seeks data on this issue. But these personal stories are important to me as we shape our overall approach to smoking cessation. And it's important to me that we uphold the FDA's responsibility to consider all sides and take into account, among other things, the risks and benefits to the population as a whole. To me, this is very promising. That paragraph in particular is very promising. I don't get the vibe that Scott Godlib or the FDA wants a full on flavor ban and that's why this comment period exists. So what we're gonna do, all of us, what we're all going to do is go over to this website, it's fda.gov, but don't worry, it's a long URL. I mean, the URL goes, 
past the edge of the, you know, edge of the browser. It's a long URL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a link to it down in the description. I really feel that we need to utilize this public comment period to get all of our thoughts to Scott Godlib and the FDA. Scott Godlib in this paper appears very open open to the idea that flavors could actually help adult smokers switch over to vaping. I know personally that if I hadn't found that decaying root beer flavor, I probably would not have stuck with vaping as easily. It was flavors that really helped me transition as an adult from cigarette smoking to vaping. Right now, all that's available on the internet is this particular press release. I don't have a link yet as of recording this video to where you can go to submit your comments to the FDA, but rest assured, as soon as that link becomes available, I'll be putting it down in the description below, along with a link to this particular press release. And really, this is just my plea to the vaping community. Just let's do this. Let's do this hard. Let's do this and stand up for vaping. Let's defend flavors to the FDA. Even if you've never done anything for advocacy ever, that's fine. Let's all make sure that we at least do this one really insanely crucial thing to really help the future of vaping, really help the future of flavors and vaping, really, really helping and ensuring that we have a variety of vapor products on the market. We want as many smokers as possible to make that change. And I believe that making that change absolutely involves flavors. So we're going to leave some comments. We're going to get some public feedback for the FDA. Remember to always be polite, always be respectful, and remember that every vapor's voice matters and that for every vapor that is positive and, and gives positive feedback and productive feedback to the FDA, there are other groups and organizations as well as other people in the public arena that are actively fighting against us. So this isn't, well, let's see how many vapors comments we can get. This is our comments versus the anti's comments because we have the opportunity to have this sort of feedback, this, this correspondence period with the FDA, but so does everybody else that is against vaping. I've been in the vapor world nine years now and I truly do believe that we can make a huge difference in the future of vaping and this right here, this comment period with the FDA is the best place to start. So really, I would just encourage everybody to read this press release, to submit your comments to the FDA and to honestly help defend vaping and help defend flavors. So cool, that's what I got. That's the news that I got for today. That's where I'm gonna leave that. Like I said earlier, I don't have a link as of right now to where we can submit our comments for this feedback period. But like I also said, as soon as it becomes available, I will put a link down in the description of this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. And as Kevin Skipper used to say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something.